So in our previous video, we looked at terrestrial biomes, biomes that are on land. If that wasn't clear, terrestrial is always referring to land. And on land, the most important thing that we look at is the vegetation, because that's where everything starts. We're going to now transition into the other biome that we're studying in the, the rest of this lecture, which would be the aquatic biomes. And we're going to entitle this first flowchart, Aquatic Biomes 1. So the rest of this lecture will actually be devoted to aquatic biomes. And let me just rewrite this as aquatic biomes 1. And then in parentheses here, you want to write down what we focus on in aquatic biomes. And that is always the physical environment. Now, it's a very general way of understanding aquatic biomes. But we'll put some more specific details to what a physical environment in an aquatic biome is. It's just as a point of differentiation. In terrestrial biomes, the thing we always looked at was vegetation. It was written right up top here. Over here, the thing that we always look at is the physical environment. So let me write that down. We're actually going to make sure that we understand that aquatic biomes are characterized 110% by their physical environment. By their physical ENV for environment. Okay, so we have this understanding. Physical environment. What does that really even mean? Well, before we get into that understanding of what the physical environment is, we have to understand that aquatic biomes are generally separated into two major categories that you're probably already familiar with, believe it or not. When we think of water, when we think of water on Earth specifically and life on Earth that's within water, we know that water can present itself in two major ways. And that's usually as either fresh water, so we have a fresh water biome, imagine, and we also have a marine water biome, let's say. In the fresh water biome, we would define anything as fresh water if it has less than 0.1% concentration of salt water. So we'll say of salt water of salt specifically. So this bracket would mean concentration, and we're co saying the concentration of salt water, if it's less than 0.1%, we are looking at a freshwater environment. Freshwater environments, for that reason, because they're so sort of close to their, usually very close to their land counterparts, their terrestrial counterparts, we can say that freshwater environments are closely linked. And what are they closely linked to? They're usually closely linked to exactly what I said, to surrounding terrestrial biomes. And that's just based off of location. And if we're next to a terrestrial biome and we have less than 0.1% salt water of salt concentration, we will have this close linkage with that biome. Remember the idea of climate? That's going to sh sort of show up uh, on itself here in this idea of freshwater as well. In freshwater biomes, we're going to be looking at, you want to look at patterns and speed of water flow. This is something we'll look at a little bit later. Patterns plus speed of water flow. When you can figure these things out, you can start seeing a lot about the living environment in this biome. This large living structure based off of the patterns and speed of water flow. We'll see that a little bit later. In the marine environment, in the marine biome more specifically, we are going to classify anything as marine if we have about 3% concentration of, of course, salt. So 3% concentration of salt, that would mean we have a marine environment. Important thing to note and something you probably already know that major fun fact that everybody utilizes uh, is that about three-fourths or 75 percent of our entire world, of the entire Earth's surface, let's say, is covered in a marine environment. A marine environment, actually a marine biome, let's say. That's a much better word. Uh, and this is technically referred to, or less technically referred to, as ocean, right? We say that 75% of the Earth's surface is covered in ocean water. We can more specifically, as a biologist, as a budding ecologist, let's say, we can say that it's a marine biome, if you want to impress your friends with this idea of 75% of the Earth's surface. So, those are our two major categories we can work off of. And now from here, we're going to look at the next important topic of zonation. This is a big study, a big fact to understand when studying biomes of the aquatic nature. 
Zonation is defined as physical and chemical stratification. Physical plus chemical stratification. So when we look at an area, specifically when we look at water and its stratuses, let's say, the deep water, the, the, less, the shallow water, the middle area of the water, we are going to observe the physical and chemical environment there. And there's this idea of physical showing itself right over here. And with physical, oftentimes also comes the idea of chemical because they go hand in hand, honestly. So when we look at this stratification, we're going to notice something. Uh, we're going to zone out, let's say, zonate the aquatic biomes that we see. And the best way to understand this is to start looking at some examples. So the first type of zone I want to look at is the horizontal. This is the horizontal zonation that we're going to study first. There are many zones, but first we'll study horizontal as a point of reference. Horizontal zones of water, of biomes, of aquatic biomes specifically, usually involve both lakes and also involve marine environment, marine biomes. So, in lakes, what we notice are two major zones, two major zonations that are based off of the physical and chemical stratification that we see. The physical and chemical properties based off of the depth of water, let's say. In lakes, we have something known as the littoral zone. So we'll call this the littoral zone. And we also have another zone called the limnetic zone. Both of these will show up again when we go outside of the horizontal zones. But in lakes, in the littoral zone, we're going to define this as simply as a shallow zone of water, shallow stratification. Uh, because it's shallow, it's usually well lit. Um, and it's also usually close to the shore. And so that makes sense. It's the littoral zone. Usually there's some litter here. It's a shallow area of water. Plants usually are able to survive here. Some leaves you can imagine. You've seen littoral zones before. It's that sort of beginning of the lake, very close to the shore. And you usually see that why it's called the littoral zone because there's usually some sort of stuff there. And that's due to this idea of it being close to the shore. In the limnetic zone of lates, this is actually going to be an area that's further from the shore. So further from shore and it is usually going to have no rooted plants. Why would it have no rooted plants? Well that's because the plants don't have anywhere to root. The water is not shallow, it's quite deep and thus you don't have plants able to root themselves on any sort of ground surface let's say. And that's why it's further from the shore and that's why we don't see rooted plants in this lake horizontal zone. In the marine horizontal zone, and think about it, horizontal meaning the zone, so if we have uh, a lake right like this, right, we're only talking about the zone that's on the top of it, this area right here, this horizontal zone. The area that's close to the shore, let's imagine here, this would be like right over here where I draw that line, this would be like our littoral zone of the lake, and then everything past this line over here, this would be like the limnetic zone. There's not really much land, let's say, the land sort of cuts off over here, and thus you can't have rooted plants. Very, very bad drawing here. Definitely look at your textbook for that idea. Marine environment, marine biome, excuse me. Here we have a couple of different zones, just to remember. They're called the intertidal zone. Don't really need to know much besides that. Um, there's also something called the neuretic zone. A lot of zones. And also the oceanic zone. Oceanic zone. So in terms of the neuretic zone, just know that this is going to be from the low tide mark, from low tide mark, so where there's low tide, that first mark, to the edge of the continental shelf. And I cannot do this justice. Uh, I would highly suggest looking at your textbook figure of this. It's a very good figure to understand a neuretic zone, continental shelf. I'm just going to give you the definition to work off of. In the oceanic zone, this is just simply open water. And that, that's it for horizontal zones. Um, so far in aquatic biomes, we know that the physical environment will be a key characterizer, uh, a characteristic, better word, for our understanding of what an aquatic biome is, the two major categories being freshwater and marine, and we've established some horizontal zones within lakes and marines, and we'll continue looking at zonation in the next video on aquatic biomes.